pretty much need to be converted to PDF for this feature. Now, there's some things that we can do. We could do the converting on our side of things. We, for instance, on the back end, we're already converting a lot of upload to PDF. We can do that on the mobile side here. If you link to a document, like a Word doc, that is one thing that we can do here is convert it to a PDF so that we can present it here and submit it. And there, we're using a tool for all this annotation stuff. And that is something that they do support. They support a, a few different doc types. One of them is like a Microsoft Word doc. And it's in beta. And so it'd take a little bit of exp a trial and a, you know, trial and error to try to figure out which ones work best and which ones don't. Are there any certain doc types that you guys would prefer over one and the other? Just, I was just curious. I, I mean, I, PDFs, PDFs make a lot of sense. I mean, I, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but I was just curious if there are other, you know, if it will begin just working with any type of file that's there. Because the problem with PDFs is not the yeah. problem, but, you know, we rely on faculty to convert things to PDFs, right? So if it could just work yep. with any file that was there, that was what I was kind of curious about. Yep, you know, that would be awesome, totally. And there's a, there, we, the back end teams at Instructure are working on this new, on, on, on revamping this so that every document does get converted on our side to a PDF, Word docs, et cetera. And when they get wrapped up with that, that could totally be an option for us. Client side, we probably could support one or two other file types and kind of like a beta, like this should probably work, but it would be really sweet for every document to just work. And we could definitely work towards that. Are there any other questions anyone has? Uh, ben, I think there's one that's in the chat that is is good to address, and that's um, what about the browser version? Do you know anything on that? Uh, so this, let's see, let's open up the chat. Um, so for the browser version, um, we, so I kind of did this honor. I'll give you some backstory. So I met with one guy who's actually in here. Um, kudos to Bobby. I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, Dorio. Um, let me yeah, know if I completely it. botched that. Yeah. So I was at I was at InstructureCon in July. I met with Bobby, and he was like, "This would be so cool." I was like, "Hey, we're already kind of halfway there. We're working on." Um, annotations from the teacher side and speed grader, syncing them, having a really great mobile experience there. And I was like, yeah, let's totally, we, we're already kind of doing this. Let's just revamp this for students as well and get this rolling. And so I kind of worked on this. And so this kind of became like a mobile thing at first. The web team is working on a new revamped annotation UI. Right now there's a current, there's an entire team dedicated to it. And I don't see that happening until after that team gets done with what they're doing currently. And then if there's enough requests for it in the community, I could totally see someone being able to just fork off of that that new web annotation experience that's not using Crocodoc and doing something just like this. But it wouldn't be until that team gets done with what they're doing. So in the future, I could totally see a feature like this coming to web, but not in the immediate future. Hey. Am I unmuted? Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. Okay. Um, we did notice, too, that it works outside of the assignments, too, so any PDF that opens. Um, if you don't have, like we have elementary kids that we don't necessarily have them turn in the assignment, they just show their work. So if a teacher just puts it on the page, like links an image to a PDF file, they can open that and write on it, and the teacher can just go by and look at it so it doesn't have to be turned in. So if it's something that's not going to be turned in or something they're going to work on all week, they can just link the file right there um, on the page, and the student can just go back there each time without it having to be wrapped up in an assignment, which is a good thing. Yeah, it certainly is. I totally let my screen sleep. Oh, we can, uh, 
So, Ben, we did have someone who came in a little late, and they were asking if we already talked about um, creating the worksheets ahead of time. And so I don't know if you want to touch or retouch a little bit on, you know, taking a PDF and attaching it to an assignment. Okay, yeah. So for this to be supported on mobile, the current flow when you create an assignment is very – it's the exact same flow when you create an assignment on the web. So when you um, go into the assignment details, and there's the option in the pane to select and attach a file to it. It'll create just this link, and you'll see your WYSIWYG editor, your, um, what do they call it, your content editor, where it's essentially your HTML, where you're editing it. Now, when you link to a file there, that's all you have to do. So from any, any type of thing, like Bobby mentioned, a page, anything. So that's really all the flow is to creating a worksheet. Is you just need to have a PDF, upload it, and then link to it from an assignment um, assignment details. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, so Cheryl is asking how to create the PDF. So it works well for annotations. Okay, so what? So I'm not I'm not too familiar where um, a lot of teachers maybe get their their documents. I was so a lot of these test documents I have I just pulled from random sites. They're like just worksheets for kids. As far as PDF creation, there's a lot of tools out there to create PDFs. I'm not really sure like where else you would get your PDF. I'm guessing a lot of it will be Microsoft Word or um, Google Docs that you go file, save as PDF. It's, it's probably yep. the most common practice. Yeah, and, and Word has awesome export functionality where you can create something, author something in Microsoft Word, and then hit File, Export, or Save as PDF, and you can just save it right then and there. Okay, great. So I saw another question about does it download and save the document to the mobile device and um, about something about cache clearing. So what happens is right now when they tap into the document, um, you'll notice that my annotation has disappeared. So we cache the document, including the annotations, until they submit. Once they submit, we clear out that cache. Does that answer your question? Okay. Great. Are there any other questions? I'm trying to see if any other questions. I see can it be in files and modules. Yeah, modules is another case. Yeah, just like pages. I'm not seeing any others. Are there any other questions? Yeah, it looks like Jen has one. She's typing. All right. And Cheryl, I think um, if you do have Further question, um, the community might be a great place to post that, and then other people that are experimenting with the tool as well might have some best practices or tips around PDF cre uh, creation. All right, so Jen asked, where does the PDF go after it is submitted from the student's perspective? So right here, as a student, um, you'll see it in the submission, and you'll see that I submitted it at 108. PM, and they can see their submission here. You can see what I submitted. And what it does is, so one thing I didn't cover is when the student submits, it takes all the annotations and essentially it embeds them into the file. So they're no longer editable. So the teacher here cannot edit these annotations at all. It's just 
it just saves the state of the annotation and that's the way it is. So they can't change it later. So after it goes, it'll be pushed up to Canvas and servers, saved as a submission so the teacher and the student can go back and look at that submission later. It will be in the student file system? Yeah, it, it will. Just like whenever a student submits an assignment, you'll see the folder inside the student's personal files. You'll see um, submissions, I believe, is the parent folder. Submissions, and it'll have like the assignment name. You'll see it right there in your student files as well. Okay, can you show us how the student can view the previous submission on the app? Yeah, so through the assignment submission. Sorry, I'm not entirely clear on what you mean there through the assignment submission, but this, this screen, the submissions tab, is where you can see all the past submissions. So once I submit through, um, once I submit through the annotation, after I've annotated something and submit it through that flow, It'll show up in the submission tab, and I can view it right here. Is that hey, am ben, I totally missing blue, the mark there, Stephanie? Your blue jean screen is over top of it. We can't see it. Oh, yep. Sorry. Perfect. All right. So does that does that answer the question? That I take it. All right. Cool. It's right through the submission tab. Do we have any other questions? That, so in Bobby's scenario where the student only shows the work to the teacher, when does the cache get cleared? Um, essentially then at that point, the cache doesn't get cleared. So we have, um, so in the next release, each student is getting their own cache, and essentially every student that those changes will just persist. Does that answer your question, Char? Yeah. So great question. So right now in the current release. They were all, all the document was just being put inside the the applications file. As of 3.15.1, which is we've actually uploaded it to Apple, every user has their own cache, so there's no conflicting annotations being put on the document. Yeah, and after this release, it will persist through um, logins and logouts unless the app gets deleted. And as long and it'll only match um yeah. Yep. That that yes, Cheryl totally hit the mark there. That is the case currently. And then three fifteen one fixes that because they'll each have their own. So Shar asked, does it count as submitting if a student uploads the file to their Canvas file? So right now, through that flow that I demonstrated, it is going to submit it as the assignment to submission right here. So if I, so when I hit submit, it's making a file submit, uh, an assignment submission for that selected assignment. So whenever you make an assignment submission, it'll also get placed in their Canvas files. But here, there's no way to just upload it to their Canvas file. It is an upload it as an assignment submission or not at all. Does that make sense, Char? Uh, so in Android, I'm not too familiar with the Android flow. They may have thrown that in, and that is that is something I'll look into for sure. If if that's the case, we could probably totally do the same thing on iOS. I wasn't aware that they threw that extra 
option in to upload to their Canvas file. But if that's the case, it should be totally doable on iOS and probably would be pretty easy. So Ben, it looks like the questions have dwindled off a tiny bit. Um, you can answer Shars, but then one thing I'd like to ask maybe the group of users is, has anyone come up with a really awesome use case experience that they've had so far testing this that you'd want to share with us? Yeah, so let me ask, um, ask these couple questions then. Um, that's perfect. So Shars' question was, uh, if it's uploaded, will it get cleared on Android? I am not entirely sure. I think it should. When I discussed with the Android developer who worked on this feature, um, he was going to match parity with iOS with what we were doing, and it should get cleared if it was uploaded as an assignment submission. I'm not sure about the file sent to my Canvas file feature on that, if it does get cleared or not. And then to for Cheryl's question about how long it took to develop this. So that's kind of an interesting question because we had started some annotation work for SpeedGrader for the teacher side of things a, little, a while ago. And because of that work, it made this work really um, easy to do. And so this actually didn't take that long. I hacked a lot of this together at Hack, at hack Week, or not at Hack Night at InstructureCon. After talking with Bobby, I went back to my hotel and just kind of cranked on it. And then afterwards, it took maybe a few days to iron out the kinks and get it through the QA process and out the door. So probably five five developer days plus some at InstructureCon. So not, not that long because of that foundation we had built prior for the other annotation work. All right, great. So does anyone have any other use cases they found was really awesome, like Renee mentioned? Okay, so Char, Char mentioned in the chat that her use case, she said, in higher ed, student downloads a PDF reading to read and highlight on the go and then shares it back to their desktop after they're done. She's had success with email and uploading to Google Drive. So one use case I might mention too is actually, um, hold on, let's read what Cheryl says. So Cheryl said that she has um, art and graphic design students she would use it with. They can draw on images and point things out they want to discuss and then type comments about. It's another great use case. Um, one that I actually ran into this past weekend is that my younger brother is currently in college right now and he was assigned an assignment where the teacher had uploaded this file and he was told that for his assignment he had to download the file, print it off on paper, fill it out and then take a picture of it and submit it. And I was like, but wait, let me show you this awesome tool that we are just rolling out with. And his mind was blown and he was like, he was like, heck yeah, like I'm not gonna print, you know, print anything when I can do this. That was another use case I ran into personally that I was fooled about. And Bobby said his third grader used it last night for a reading response paper. And they and his kindergarten is using to trace shapes and letters, et cetera. That's actually one of the assignments here I've got is an alphabet, you know, let's practice your A's. That's another use case that I had kind of thought this would be great at that Bobby found as well. Mulaney said labeling images, identification activities, showing work in math, engineering, and stats is commonly scanned. Some of these could be annotations, and they sure could. 
would be a great use case for it. Has anyone been trying this out in their classes recently or besides Bobby, of course? I'm really excited to start seeing um, some of these use cases come out in the community as people share what they've learned and best practices. This is exciting. Yeah, it's a great feature. So we hope you all enjoy it. Uh, there is one question from Lisa there. Do you see it, Ben? Uh, yeah, so it says, do you know if the PDF official docs that need signatures would suffice when signed this way? Um, yes. So some PDFs have forms enabled where you can like type in, click into the forms and they're like official forms. A lot of like official documents have those such as like maybe, I, I know a lot of like tax documents, but in schools, like I would think that a lot of um, tuition reimbursement, like, um, federal aid documents would have forms enabled. Anything that needs forms, um, yeah, you could tap right in, they support forms. We do not have a signature type enabled on the sidebar. That is something that if you guys want, we could totally enable. Essentially the signature, um, the signature flow would, there'd be a signature option in the sidebar and then the first time they'd be asked to um, sign their signature. And then after that, it'll save that signature to that user. And so when they go into edit, they can just one, one or two taps and select that signature and drag it into the document and resize it. So yeah, it seems like some of you guys might be interested in that. And that's something totally we could enable. So Cheryl asked, you didn't get a sidebar on my iPhone. Is that only for larger screens? So this sidebar is movable. We, um, I tapped and hold on this, um, this thumb, thumb thing at the very bottom that's highlighted in white. It's movable. And so initially you might see it in the nav bar. And it might show up there instead. So that's maybe where you first saw it. Yep, tap and drag, perfect. Well, this is awesome conversation, Ben, and I wanna be super respectful of your time because um, we just appreciate you coming out to talk to us. So I'm gonna encourage everybody, if they have more questions, to go ahead and post them in the event itself, and I will uh, put that link into the chat here in just a minute. And then we'll probably wrap up. So appreciate everyone coming. Thank you so awesome. much, Thank Ben. Thank you, everyone. Yep, I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye.